So Matt Colville totally made a video like this a while ago and he gave some great advice about it. So I highly recommend watching it. This video is just a big meme and I'm just giving credit where credit is due. Also, in case you guys don't know, I uh, kind of like Lord of the Rings a lot. The stuff that I explained in this video is not actually how I feel about the <laughs> source material. Like for example, I give Aragorn a lot of crap in this video. Um, Aragorn's probably like my favorite character, so. It's a joke. Okay, here it goes. So this game starts with a session zero where the DM explains what is going on with the world. And then this whole bit with a seal door is either one of two things. The DM's notes on the whole campaign or their lore document that they sent to the group in session zero in which Gandalf, Aragorn and Boromir's characters actually read. When they get onto character creation, I'm pretty certain that the fellowship party is seven players with Merry and Pippin being NPCs. However, at the beginning of the campaign, it's only four. The first game starts and it turns out Aragorn's player can't show up, but the DM doesn't want to give up on their game days, so they still play game one. So they do a sort of prologue game with Gandalf, Frodo, and Sam, who explains last minute that he's going to be late to the game. And the DM wants a fourth, so he calls in an old friend from his previous campaign, who he didn't want to have play in this game at all, because in their last campaign, The Hobbit, he was a real problem character who was way too maxed out in stealth, rolled really high on a loot table and got an artifact level item and couldn't decide what he wanted to do in the story, but then ended up naming the entire campaign after himself. But he calls him up anyways. They have him play a super old version of his character, so it's like he's level one again. But of course, Bilbo makes everything about himself and is all, oh, DM, the ring I have would slow my aging so I wouldn't be that elderly and makes the whole first game about his birthday party. Gandalf and Bilbo are old friends though, and they have a fun time, but Frodo and Sam's characters are kinda new, and Frodo tries being involved with the story, but is being constantly overshadowed by smoking and really, really experienced role-playing. The DM gets kind of tired of this birthday party game and has Bilbo roll wisdom saves on his super powerful ring, which has a corruption aura. He fails and starts going a little crazy. Bilbo's character is not happy about this because he's a bit of a min-maxed character and doesn't really like when negative things happen to him. The DM says, well, this isn't even your campaign. Bilbo's character decides to leave the campaign and the DM takes over his character. He has Bilbo leave the ring and Frodo finally feels like he can be in the game now since Bilbo left. Gandalf really wants to get rid of this problematic ring, but he doesn't have an in-character reason to explain how he knows what it is, so he does some downtime activity researching the power of the ring and discovers what it is. He comes back and tells Frodo everything about it. This is, of course, Gandalf's player rolling intelligence checks and the DM explaining all of it, with Gandalf's player going, I repeat all of this to Frodo. Sam's player finally shows up after being late and desperately wants to be in the campaign now and forces himself in. Gandalf makes up a reason as to how he can be in the party now, and the two set off to Rivendell with Nazgul following up behind them. That's where session one ends, as Gandalf realizes he can't be their next game and the DM comes up with, well, uh, Gandalf goes and speaks with the wizard leader, which is why he's uh, absent in next game. This in turn actually excites Gandalf's player, and he prepares a bunch of stuff to send to the DM about what he wants to do when he gets there. The next game session, Aragorn is actually able to show up, but because he wasn't there for the first game, he sits in the corner for two hours of the session doing nothing until the DM introduces his character, in which Frodo and Sam do a travel montage, where they run into random encounters such as wandering elves, Nazgul, Merry and Pippin, which the DM had be with them in case they actually fight the Nazgul because their CR is really high and adding two more characters would give them some action economy. Meanwhile, Aragorn's player is wondering why he can't just have been introduced in Hobbiton and the DM is like, it wouldn't make sense. So it turns out Frodo and Sam both have a minus two to their survival and they cannot find the correct path to Rivendell. Also, as players, they are much more focused on RP rather than combat or exploration. They don't use maps, they don't care which way they go, they barely know how their character sheet works, but they take every chance to RP something about their character. They're just walking right here and Sam decides to have a whole moment of role play to explain that he's never been this far from home before or how the elves make him sad or how he can't leave Frodo behind or how he can't sleep. Eventually they finally make it to Bree where Frodo is making tons of deception checks and the DM is laughing behind the screen because why would the gate guard of Bree be working with the Nazgul? Aragorn's character is finally introduced and he's like, I'm sitting in the corner watching them with my cloak up. The DM has Pippin go spreading Frodo's name around to show him it doesn't really matter whether he uses his name or not. Frodo reeks out and tries to stealth, rolls a natural one and falls. Then Frodo's player is like, well, uh, actually, could I have just put on the ring? And everyone at the table is like, <gasps> and the DM is like, well, you can't just go back on your natural one, but we'll work it into your fail. And this happens. 
Aragorn's player who was like really into the lore the DM wrote for this game because he was the main character in his last campaign has this whole character arc planned for the game and knows exactly what the ring is and knocks some sense into Frodo by telling him that they need to stealth their way to Rivendell instead of just walking around and role playing every three seconds. And Aragorn's character here isn't even rolling a survival check. His player is just so into the campaign, he just explains what the Nazgul are and takes control as the party leader to destroy the ring. They start going to Rivendell and Aragorn is maxed out in survival, so they just go day by day encountering nothing. The DM starts throwing little things at them like mosquitoes, but it isn't completely detrimental. At this point, the DM is getting real nervous because he has been so used to Frodo and Sam's characters being clueless throughout the travel bits, which Aragorn has plowed through. And he has all of these encounters planned that are just getting skipped because Aragorn is so good. They have a little RP bit because Aragorn is extra and wrote a whole song for his character that he sings at the table. Frodo's player, of course, loves this and role plays with him. As they continue traveling, Aragorn gets up to go to the bathroom and the DM has Merry and Pippin just completely ruin their stealth to force an encounter because they kept skipping all of them. He forgets that his stat blocks for Merry and Pippin are CR half, plus Frodo and Sam barely know how to play the game. Frodo makes a ballsy move though and puts on the ring because it's the only thing he knows how to do. Uh, they have true sight and Frodo gets stabbed. Aragorn comes in and of course he knows they're vulnerable to fire damage and the Nazgul flee because the DM doesn't want a TPK yet. Meanwhile, Gandalf is having some sick RP over text that the DM is doing at the same time as this game that ultimately ends with him escaping. Frodo, again, really into the roleplay, really plays up his stab wound even though the DM just told him he's been poisoned and losing 1 HP every day. Aragorn's player asks the DM, hey, so did you read my backstory? I have a girlfriend character that would be looking for us since I told her that I left and she's in Rivendell and she knows that I'm on my way there. The DM rolls his eyes and has Arwen show up and Aragorn reminds the DM that she has a cool horse magic and he goes, okay, fine. Then she would just take Frodo since she has a horse and Aragorn is like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And Sam's character is like, bro, what? I thought we were supposed to do that. But the disgruntled DM wants to make Aragorn feel useful. So Arwen gets Frodo to Rivendell, stops all the Nazgul and just fast travels everybody to Rivendell since he was already fed up with them skipping all the encounters anyways. The DM ends the session, maybe a little upset at Aragorn's overpowered so during the next session, Aragorn's been talking all about this D&D game to his friends and now they want to join. He asks the DM if they can add three more players and the DM is cool with it, but initially a little reluctant. He sent this huge backstory to the DM about how he's Isildur's heir and he really wants to take the ring to Mordor to become the true king of Gondor. And the DM really wants the game to just be about the party and give Frodo a bit more emphasis because he and Sam are newer players. Aragorn's player understands and is willing to take a backseat so long as they can get to all of his backstory stuff in the campaign. The DM looking at his campaign notes, which are just the journey to Mordor, doesn't want Aragorn to hate the game and agrees and starts writing a bunch of stuff into the game. Since the DM feels bad for ignoring Frodo's fun, he rewards him with all of Bilbo's magic items since he's out of the campaign now and not going to do anything. However, the DM promptly forgets about Sam, who will be salty about this for the whole game. Also, Gandalf is able to play, so now the table is seven players and the DM is really overwhelmed. He starts the game re-explaining the main plot to all the new characters so everyone understands, but Boromir, who went the extra mile to make a really detailed character, is constantly metagaming and questions why the main plot should be to destroy the ring and why they can't just use it to kill Sauron. Aragorn is a bit more on the DM's side and knows the plot that he wants to make and gives reasons for the story to happen, but the argument just ensues and Boromir thinks that it's a waste to just destroy this super powerful item. And the first three hours of the game is all seven of these players just arguing while Frodo and Sam kind of sit in the background. Frodo gets really tired of all the non-character moments, plus he's overwhelmed with playing with a bunch of new people and just wants to go back to the small RP moments with Sam, so he decides to take the ring by himself. Everyone decides that this is enough to quell their arguments for now and all decide, yeah, let's just play the game and go on the quest already. The DM has really grown attached to his DMPCs, Merry and Pippin, and lives for their inconsequential antics. Because they're DMPCs, they can make silly mistakes and it only hurts the party. So they join. 
The party finally sets off, and the DM runs the party through a bunch of random encounters with skill challenges, like hiding from the Crabane, climbing a snowy mountain, and braving the storm, where Gandalf succeeds his Arcana check to realize it's Saruman. Boromir's player still thinks it's dumb to destroy one of the most powerful items in the game, even though no one in the party can attune to it, and has a small RP moment where he nearly takes the ring. Everyone's pretty nervous, especially because they just met this new guy in the campaign, and his first character he made is obsessed with powerful magic items. The storm is really bad, and the game is really slowed down as they're trying to travel through the mountains. The DM has come up with a bunch of encounters and characters that are going to be in the mountains, but Frodo just decides that they should just go back to the Mines of Moria, which is something in Gimli's backstory that he mentions. The DM is pretty upset about this and tells all the players that it's going to be really, really deadly. There's going to be a bunch of powerful enemies and bad guys down there, and they're probably not going to live. The party's like, yeah, bring it on, and they do it anyways. Gandalf was a player in the Hobbit campaign, and he knows that Balin never returned from Moria. He rolls an intelligence check, and the DM tells him in secret, yeah, you know there's a Balor, <clears throat> I mean a Balrog down there. Gandalf just keeps that to himself because everybody has decided to go to the Mines of Moria. The party makes it to the entrance of the mines, and the DM sets up a really difficult door puzzle to make this entire area seem really hard, but Frodo just guesses it, and they open it. The DM is a little upset about that, and really wants to hammer in how dangerous this area is, and going to the Mines of Moria means they're gonna die, so he has this creature called the Watcher attack, which is legendary and has 500 hit points and the party definitely can't fight it but legolas rolls a natural 20 and they escape the party explores the mines and there's like nothing in here at all because the dm didn't expect the party to go this way and had a bunch of content for the mountain and he can't just take the mountain content and put it in moria because it wouldn't make sense so they're just kind of getting lore dumps from the dm who's explaining the mines but they're really not discovering or finding anything they're just walking the whole time the party short rests as gandalf fails a survival roll Later, Gimli has a sad character moment where he realizes Balin is dead, and Gimli's player just tells everyone that Gimli is sad. The DM wants the party to encounter something already, so he describes Pippin twisting an arrow as it falls into the well, because the party is actually being really careful, but the only people who make mistakes are the DMPCs because the DM is forcing them. Gandalf hates these DMPCs and did not want to bring them in the first place, and now they roll initiative and fight a cave troll and a bunch of goblins. This is mostly because the DM got a bunch of new minis, and most of them were goblins and a cave troll, and he wanted to use them. Frodo rolls a deception check to try to be dead because Frodo's character still doesn't know what an action is and barely knows how combat works. Everyone else has fun with the encounter, and Legolas rolls a natural 20 and kills the troll. The party travels through Moria at a fast pace and gets chased by the Balrog. Gandalf's character knows what it is and really plays up how powerful these guys are, mostly because he wants to sound cool. Skill challenge again! Total success! Gandalf wants to get a bunch of XP for killing a Balrog, so he casts Shatter on the bridge and cheeses the Balrog fight because the DM forgot it has a fly speed. Everyone cheers as they level up like three levels, but once again, the DM is upset by skipping an entire encounter, so he pulls Gandalf off the bridge. Everyone is shocked that the DM just killed Gandalf's character in one hit. But Gandalf's character is repeatedly saying, nah, I'll be fine, don't worry. Everybody's really confused whether or not Gandalf's going to continue playing because he just fell off a cliff, but Gandalf's character just stays at the table anyways and just watches what happens. The DM is like, yeah, I told you that this would be super powerful and you guys were probably going to die and look what happened, even though it was the DM PC who caused this problem in the first place. While everyone else is pretty disgruntled, Frodo is being dramatic as hell as he starts role-playing out what he does, screams out for Gandalf, and cries alone on a rock. The party then goes to Lothlorien to get a long rest. The DM rewards everybody with magic items for getting so far, but for some reason, Sam keeps getting the short end of the stick and just gets rope. At this point, the party is pretty tired, out of game. They've been playing for a long time, and it, they're close to calling it. The DM is rambling on about Argonath and Amon Hen, and nobody really cares because it doesn't pertain to their characters very much, but Boromir's character is dead set on getting the ring. It's late, he's had a few white claws, he wants the super powerful magic item. Plus, the ring has the corruption aura effect, and Boromir is the only one failing them, and he's getting charmed by the ring. So when he attacks Frodo to try to take it from him, he keeps saying, it's what my character would do. Uh, sorry, it's just what my character would do. Frodo's player at this point is pretty upset. He didn't want to play with this many people, and they're just trying to take the ring from him. Plus, Gandalf died. Aragorn's player feels bad because he brought all of this upon him and lets Frodo leave the 
party, right, as the DM sets up an encounter with a bunch of Uryx. The whole party is separated, but Aragorn is min-maxed, so he barely takes any damage and kills a ton of Uryx. The DM also feels bad for Frodo and how the end of this game has turned out, so he has Merry and Pippin get captured because everything was kind of their fault, but Boromir tries to save them to redeem himself, but I really think it's just because Boromir's player really still wants to get the ring and... Maybe if he saves Merry and Pippin, then that won't happen. Then Boromir gets hit by an arrow that does 20 damage, and everyone's like, 20 damage? And Boromir hits zero hit points. The DM has enough of Boromir's antics and really wants the guy to play a new character since Frodo wants to leave the party, and he's actively trying to stop this. Aragorn 1v1s Lurts and has a moment with Boromir where he fails all of his death saving throws because no one in the party can heal or has potions of healing. Frodo leaves, Sam joins him, of course, but they finally get a moment alone together and they have this will they won't they role play moment where the two start crying in game and at the table. The game ends, the DM decides to split the game into two different games with two different parties and go from there since seven was a lot. Boromir tells everybody that he has made a new character and his name is Gollum.